Hey guys, it's uh, Matt here, aka Addicted. Um, I've got a slightly different video for you today, so we're going to look over uh, one of the race spec Racer 3 DRL quads. So this is one of the ones which is actually used in the racing. Um, if you're probably aware, we get ones to practice with, but they're slightly different, so we don't normally have crossfire. Um, we're using, you know, just the standard FR Sky Tyrannus receivers. Um, and we don't normally have the LEDs either, so this is quite a bit heavier. It's uh, exactly how we run it in the races, so we can do a little unboxing video and uh, show you what makes up a DRL quad. Um, so we can see that we've got the LEDs, if I just turn it on. There you go, so that's the standard configuration. Um, this spine actually changes to white for all the different colours that the pilots have to signify away. Just in case you know you get people with similar colours on the same group. Um, so let's start off with some basic stuff. So first off you can see this canopy at the front. So this is a polarised canopy which is designed to protect the GoPro and the camera. Uh, we don't normally use these but these are used, um, the idea is if we have you know like a, an event with water or something where we need a waterproof quad then uh, this protects a lot of it. Um, similarly, there'll be conformal coating in the electronics to, to make that possible. Um, but as you can see, not really much has to happen for that to be possible. So straight away you'll notice we've got a polycarbonate canopy. Um, it's actually really strong, so I've crashed this a ton of times. Um, not this specific one, the trainer one obviously. Uh, you do break it, but not as often as you think. You know, We're full power straight into the ground. And we're not really doing any damage, which is just amazing. Um, all up weight is just under a kilo. Um, so it's around 980 grams. I weighed this one with everything. So this is, as I say, a stock stock racer. So we've got a Lumineer AX2 antenna. Um, interestingly, they're left hand polarized. So that gives away the video. So we're running uh, analog video. It's using a TS. 5823 which is slightly modified for DRL use. Um, you can see the motors. These are Brother Hobby uh, 2206 T2 motors. Uh, they're actually running a special KV because we're on 5S. Uh, so I believe these are 1800 KV. Um, and we're also running HQ Prop 6x4x3s uh, which spin really nicely. So I guess the first thing you're wondering is, wow, that's a pretty heavy quad, but if you've seen any of my other videos, um, you'll see it handles really well considering the weight. Um, I'm going to be doing a whole series of videos to try and demonstrate what the Racer 3 can do, because I've been practicing it for months, I've had it, you know, since January, so hopefully we can get some good videos and you can kind of appreciate what a cool quad this is. Um, Underneath you can see we have a pulse battery, so this is a 5S 1800mAh 75C. Um, it's got a ton of power, it will do two minutes on a normal course, it's kind of tight. Um, if you've seen DRL before you'll know that the courses tend to be around a minute. Um, that's just for TV purposes. Um, but it will do two minutes, I've done races with this um, against friends and even at some just small local events to show people the quad. So, right, first things first, we're going to uh, take the polycarbonate shell off, so we need to take the props off. Right, so this is the Racer 3 without props, so what we can do first off is take the canopy off. Um, not currently running a GoPro, but you can see here, uh, that's where the session sits. There's actually a little hole underneath to start uh, start recording. Uh, you'll notice with the FPV camera we're using the GoPro lens, 2.5mm and if you look carefully on the TPU you can see that we have different levels for adjusting the camera, there's five in total um, so you go crazy, that's kind of you know, Sean Taylor tilt if you want to call it that um, it goes all the way down to kind of matching where the GoPro is. Um, interestingly we all kind of run similar tilt so we kind of match the GoPro and go a tiny bit more so this is tilt level 3 um, which is probably the most common I would say. Um, so that's just a little, little brief overview. So let's take the rest of the quad apart. So 
So underneath we've got um, eight screws, so we've got four in the close of the arms and on the edge of the arms we've got another four which are being held together with bolts um, they're just standard M3 size that is all eight screws uh, taken off so the first thing we need to do is uh, loosen the antenna mount, this is kind of just fixed on um, so I guess with the antenna you'll notice this is one of the tuned antennas from TBS for the Crossfire unit. Um, you'll see there's only one actually, so we're using the micro receivers. Um, so this is the polycarbonate shower. You can see it's quite thick actually. Um, it's properly moulded. They put a great amount of effort into to doing this and it looks so good in the air. So I'll put that there. So this is the guts of the DRL quad. Um, straight off we can see tons of LEDs everywhere. Uh, we've got the video receiver. As, as I said this is just a TS5823. Um, right at the back um, on this custom PDB that you can see there is a Motolab Cyclone. So this is the F3 version I believe. Um, and sat on top is a custom TPU mount which just houses the micro receiver of the Crossfire. Um, there's an easy to access boot button for when they're doing uh, firmware updates and that kind of thing. In the middle of the PDB we have regulators so there's one here a 12 volt regulator and another one here which is 5 volt so we obviously we need to power all the LEDs but they need to be good to withstand 5S current. Um, and Being that there are so many LEDs it's a big regulator. Um, you'll see there's all custom pads uh, all the way around for the uh, speed controllers and the power wires are just sat at the back. Um, this, let me just take this apart. So we can see underneath we've just got a slot for the battery strap that goes all the way through the carbon. So we can take this off. So we have a nice little Racer 3 logo here. Obviously you can see in there we have the DRL logo too. So this is all sort of custom made to DRL spec which is just fantastic. Uh, such a cool quad. So that's the carbon, the bottom piece. Again this is just fully moulded. You can see the awesome logo. Uh, these things would stand a beating being polycarbonate. We originally had ABS. Um, and when you crash they just completely shattered so it's, uh, it's quite a different story so here they're actually using a Rotogeeks HS1177 we do run um, NERC's GoPro settings funnily enough so we have tuned GoPro settings that we all agreed on which is really really good uh, so going into the levels we don't have really any video issues in terms of picture, colour or quality and that kind of thing, so as you know all the DRL events tend to be indoors. Right, so as I said, so we've got Brother Hobby Motors. Uh, these are actually Rotogeeks 20 amp uh, plus ESCs. And I guess you're thinking, well why are they using those? Well these do 5S absolutely no problem. The FETs I believe are rated for about 45 amps so they're, they're really strong ESCs. Um, they take 5S no problem so it's just an ideal ESC which takes abuse again and again. So what we can actually do is have a look under here so it's just a, an LED strip so we have the uh, the micro receiver there. You notice there is um, uh, servo pins for everything. So we've got the receiver pin there, so it's easy to just swap them out if you have a bad crash. Uh, you know, because you get all the engineers who have to repair all these quads once we've smashed them. Uh, there's also uh, servo pins for the LEDs as well. And that is pretty much it. So it's a, I believe, a f four or five mil thick frame. Soslo, I don't have my calipers with me. 
Yes, 4 mil. So it's a solid 4 mil plate. Um, it is true X, despite having no body here, because obviously you have this stuck out. Uh, the battery does slide into here to give you perfect centre of gravity. Um, you'll also notice the whole PDB is actually soft mounted. Um, which you can't really see here. You've got O-rings here, they're all the way around. There's only five standoffs. Uh, there's not one on this side because of the, the VTX. have got a custom plate here which also sits the VTX and the LED strip. Um, and at the front we have camera plugs, VTX and that kind of thing. So that is really what makes up the Racer 3. Um, put together it's, it's an awesome beast. As I said, it's around uh, 950 to 980 grams, so it's not light by any stretch. Um, but it just flies amazing. It really does. Uh, I also do have a Racer 2, which I can grab. So compared to this beast, uh, it's pretty much the same size, near enough. Uh, so this is um, 271 millimeters motor to motor, extending to about 340, so it's a big quad. Um, and this one is a bit smaller, but it's also a H-frame. Um, but you can just see, you know, it's the same thickness carbon, but we're running 2204, so there's a huge difference right away. This is also running 4S, and the original style GoPros. So you had extra weight there, and you're running slower motors, and it, yeah, I've flown this, and I can say this is without a doubt a monumental achievement for DRL. Um, and I'm not even exaggerating that fact; it's just it's crazy. Like the the sheer difference is just unbelievable. I flew the Racer too um, because I got them at the same time, and I was just like, oh my god. How did these guys do it? Like, hats off to all of the Season 2 pilots for being able to fly that the way they did. Um, you just, you honestly can't appreciate how different it flies to any other quad. Um, this is much, much more like a normal racing quad. You can still feel the weight, so it's kind of like you're flying with a GoPro. Um, and you're kind of on motors, maybe from mid last year. So it's kind of, it's it's not slow but you can feel the weight um, it's great at accelerating because you've got 6 inch and tri-blades um, it's just an awesome quad so let's put this back together um, and we can show you some of the funky stuff so you see how easily it fits together just need to put this in first And that is it, that's that's the DRL quad. So if you guys have got any questions or or anything really, just just put in the in the comments um of the video and I'll answer as best I can. Um I hope it's been useful. As I say I'll be releasing tons of footage um for you guys to see of all the sort of different practicing that I've been doing to try and learn the quad and get the up on everybody else. So Thanks guys, peace out.